Hello and welcome to Real Estate 360, the show about real estate. That's why we call it Real Estate 360. And everything about it, right? Yes. Steve Conley here, hashtag unemployable. And this is Mr. Jason O. Miles, hashtag the real estate trainer. And good morning. Good morning. And you know what? We were on a call last night because, you know, you said real estate trainer. And uh, this was a conference call. You know, I'm supposed to be involved in it. And it's one of our clients, <laughs> our potential clients. And so I'm listening and, you know, I, and I'm saying, wow, you know, this is why I'm partners with Jason O. Miles because he's the hashtag real estate trainer. You know, I can do this stuff, but I'm not as good at explaining it as you are. Oh, you're all too kind. But I mean, you're, you're like, you kind of back up. I want to jump to the end, but you know, you're, <laughs> you're like, let's back up here and let's find out, you know, what it is you want to do and how you want to get there and right. what the process, what are your personal goals and what do you, what kind of resources do you have? Absolutely. And what do you like to do? What do you don't like to do? You like to cover all those bases. And, yeah. and I appreciate that. You know, <clears throat> having been on the road and worked with so many of the, you know, gurus, some are, you know, they're, they're different. I won't say better or worse than one another. But one of the things that you find is there is this big machine behind all of them, whether they're really good or really bad, right? There's this big machine behind them, and it's all cookie cutter. Right. You know, there's no segmenting what it is you need. I mean, the way they break up the programs for people to buy them, you know, there's a, the only way to get everything you want is to buy everything they have, right? Right. But it's so much education, and everyone doesn't want to do the same thing. I mean, not everyone wants to be a landlord. Exactly. I, I look. Hey, you're looking at one right, right now. I don't want to be a landlord. Like, yes, I don't, I don't want to pay for training to be a landlord when it's the last thing I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's really important to talk to people individually, like we do, and say, okay, what is it you want to do today? Right. And what are your attributes? You know, what do you have? You know, do you have some money? Do you have some credit? Do you not have either one? Do you have one of the two? You know, because that. That's a, that's going to weigh heavy on what it is you can do right now. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's really important to figure out what people need, what yeah. they really need and what they really have so that we can formulate an accurate roadmap for them to achieve the success that they're looking for. And and with us, you don't have to buy everything that we have. No. <laughs> to get to what it is you want to do. That's right. You know, and right now everything we have is, you know, our next seminar which is $20. And, you know, yeah, some yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Which yeah. is, by the way, December 7th uh, at from 10 to 12, go to realestate360show.com and uh, you'll find all the information there. It'll link you right over to Eventbrite. You can sign right up. That's right. And uh, really quick, I want to thank everyone who's been listening on the podcast, on YouTube, uh, wherever you can catch us. I, I really want to thank you guys. Continue to watch. Continue to, su to support. Subscribe comment engage with us on itunes on uh google play on spotify on uh, youtube whatever or at the site you know just engage with us let us know what you think let us know what you like what you don't like i love it keep it coming let's keep it moving okay now thanksgiving just passed really it did it's over no more awkward political conversations <laughs> are necessary. <laughs> you mean with family? <laughs> with family. Yeah, right. With family, that's right. <laughs> you guys got it out of the way. I'm proud of you. You're still alive. Yeah. Keep it moving, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably one of the worst ones ever, right? That's a pretty awkward, awkward place to be right now, right, with all that's going on. Having said that, now that we're past it, we're past that part of the holiday, that's a big one. Thanksgiving's a big one. Now, Christmas is right around the corner. So now's the time for that people are generally, you know, gearing up to do all kinds of things. You know, they're going to get their paperwork ready for their taxes so they can, you know, splurge on whatever thing they want to buy when that comes, comes in. Right. Right. Uh, but uh, you guys want to make sure that you understand that along with the new year comes a new attitude, a new beginning, if you will. So take this opportunity to bet, better yourself, if you will, put yourself in a better situation, at least begin that process. It could be real estate education. It could be uh, nursing school. It could be whatever it is for you. Obviously, if you're listening to this, it's about real estate and business, right? 
Well, it could so, be. <laughs> they could be just listening, you know. Yeah, for sure. They turned the radio on, and here we are. Yeah, here know? we are. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but utilize this time between now and the end of the year, the beginning of the year, however you want to look at it, to really decide what it is you want to do and how you want to get there. Because obviously for us, it's real estate. It's changed our lives. We've got people that we work with that it's changed their lives, uh, for the better, that is. And I want to want to put that one in there. But uh, we want to have an opportunity to work with folks. We want to have an opportunity to continue to build our network uh, with, you know, just just people with different experiences, right? You know, there's always an imbalance of some sort. You know? Yeah. Either we have way too much money and not enough projects. Right. Or we have too many projects and not enough money. So we're always doing this balancing, juggling act. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to those, all those resources. Yeah. So yeah, come to us, bring what you got. Let's see what we can do with it and uh, team up. That's right. Now, yeah. now some of the things that we've got coming up, you know, and we'll get into what we're doing in the next segment, but some of the things that we got coming up, you've made reference to our event on December 7th. Correct. Which is literally like, like a week, a week away. Yeah. Not far. You know? huh? <laughs> so, um, you know, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing there. Tell the listeners today. Uh, well, we're, we're going to be doing basically the year-end wholesaling, you know, review. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, everything and for us, really, everything comes down to, it uh, comes back to understanding the wholesale business. Yeah. Because if you understand the wholesale real estate business, as a business and not just a marketing thing where you're buying, you're bringing stuff in and then turn around and resending it, but you really dig deep and you understand what the values are, what the after repair values are. And by the way, this can be single families. It can be multifamilies. It can be commercial prop. It's anything and everything. It's kind of the same formula that, you know, Warren Buffett uses, mm. you know, we're looking for, the value mm -hmm. in anything that we're buying. And, and more importantly, the added value. Right. Right. Because well, the, we're first off, we're looking for a bargain. Right. And then we're looking for the reason why it's a bargain. So we don't stump our own toe. And then, yeah, uh, yeah. and then we're looking for the added value. That's right. Because all of those things really, I mean, it, like you said, it doesn't matter if it's single family or multifamily, all of those things are what we're looking for in every one of these deals. And every one of these opportunities, I should say. Right. You know, it's, it's very difficult, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, we, I was having a conversation with another gentleman that we're working with, and he just could not put, you know, the pieces together. He was, he was missing something. Like, he had the pieces. Yeah. But it just was, it wasn't gelling for him, right? So it was a matter of just really taking going backwards in the conversation with him to find out where he missed a thing because for as bright as this young man is i mean he, you'd think that okay i'm i'm all the way here but I, i'm not taking action because i'm missing something and what is that something so we had to really break it down yeah. go backwards with him and say all right here's where we start you know a B, C, D, E, F, G. And he said, oh, wait, well, there's this one thing I didn't quite get. And that was the, that was the thing. He passed it. You know, we were talking about um, a marketing campaign. Okay, yeah. And he just couldn't figure out. He knew, okay, I got to go get so There was this. a disconnect. There was he, a total disconnect for him in terms of how he was going to receive the information in okay. terms of the telephone calls and this God. and that and and what he was going to say to the people. He, he had just gone over that whole part. Mm. He missed the whole thing. He went from get postcards or letters, mail them. <laughs> He's, for, from that point, he went to make deal. You know, the, he missed the whole negotiation, the whole gathering of the information. He just missed it. He, he just, for some reason in his mind, he thought he was going to go from ma mailing these letters out, which he was prepared to do himself because oh. he thought it was going to save him money. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. You know, you, listen, I, if you're going to mail a thousand letters or postcards out, don't try to sit there and handwrite these things out. You'll never get it done. The, the six cents that you're going to save on each one is nothing compared to the time you're about to spend trying to save six cents. Okay. 60 bucks. 
And why wouldn't you spend a thousand dollars, you know, on a mailing or two thousand dollars right. to find a transaction right. where you can make five or ten thousand dollars and then now it becomes easily duplicatable. But if mm-hmm. you're sitting there you say, Oh gosh, now I gotta, you know, put together another thousand letters and lick them all and get, you know, paper cuts <laughs> on my tongue. <laughs> Which happens. <laughs> yeah, Which does right. happen. It does I I can personally attest yes. to that. Yeah. Yes, it does, does. happen. Hey, going back to the seminar while we have another minute and a half or so. Um, so this is wholesaling review year in, and really we're just kind of backing up going through the numbers. So, you know, we have it out there on Eventbrite, so I had a question from one of the people who, who saw it there. Yes. And so she said, what is this? Is this like a, a, just networking, or is it what? Or is it a seminar? What is it? So, you know, I sent her back a message. I said, no, it's two solid hours of real estate you know, pure information and training. Yes. And yes, you can network, you know, before and after that. And you should, mm-hmm. you know, cause there'll be some great people there, but, um, really it's just information and we're not selling, you know, our next $299 seminar right. or our next 2,999. We're not doing that. We just, we're just there to train yeah. on, on this. And, and back to that, which is, we're going to go through all the numbers, you know, how to calculate it, what to do, how to look at it from your in buyer's perspective, which is what you're, what you're there for. Bottom line is that the, when you get right down to it, when you get down to the end of it, somebody has to be there at the end of the transaction to buy this. Yes. And they have to have a reason to buy. Right. Because look, everybody has a different reason to buy, and that has everything to do with how you package that deal as well. That's right, it does. You know, so let's take a break and come back and talk a little bit more about some marketing stuff. Take a break. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833-WILL-BUY. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. Welcome back. Real Estate 360 Show. And, hey, this is Steve Connolly. So, Steve, Steve, this is, I got to ask you, Steve. Yes, sir. We do a lot of stuff. We do a lot of different kind of marketing you know, sometimes we'll do techniques. We'll utilize techniques not even knowing it. You're the king of the drive-by, by the way. You Am know, I? You are. I've just and I've, I talk about this all the time. I mean, Steve will just be driving down the street. You know, see some people working on a house, pull over, and be like, "Hey, are you the owner?" <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. Yes, you do. No, I say you've actually got deals. Like you that. say you're the owner. I say you're the owner, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Because, right. you know, then they either say, yes, how'd you know? Or they say, and they laugh and they say, no. That's right. <laughs> but the thing about that is it's so casual. You yeah. know, it's like, I don't have anything to do for the next hour, hour and a half. I'm going to just pull over here and talk to some contractors. <laughs> and, you know, maybe they're, maybe they know someone that has a deal because contractors, when they're not getting paid by someone, they know that this person's in trouble and they be like, hey, you need to call so-and-so. They own a house over, down the street over here. They're yeah. probably willing to sell or, you know, whatever the case. And, you know, you found deals like that just casually. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, we pretty much do everything. I mean, between, I guess, technically that would be like driving for dollars. Yeah, it would of, be, yeah. You know, um, you know, but for me. Technically and driving for dollars just don't seem to go together. No, they don't. There's no, <laughs> there's no technical uh, aspect. Right. It's just drive and do your thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but We've also had some success with banded signs. Now, the consistency uh, for us is that, you know, we have all these properties that we can just throw banded signs in front of and on. And, you know, we'll put them, we'll staple them to the house if we haven't uh, done any renovations, to, even if we have done renovations to it or are in the process of it. I mean, they're just all over certain areas for us. Uh, we've even had issues with uh, the code enforcement. Yeah. Um, now, which is very interesting because... Code enforcement doesn't want you to put those bandit bandit signs out in in the public areas, right? Well, when you own 30 houses, you can put whatever you want in the yard or on the house. Code enforcement doesn't seem to care about that, though. You you know, every now and then, and I'm not saying I've ever done this. I'm not saying I haven't. uh, There are these abandoned houses, you know, that you can go put a sign in front of that's 
you know, not on the right of way, you know, mm-hmm. in the yard. And, that's right. You know, maybe they'll stay there for a while. And that's that's the whole plan. <laughs> you know, that's the whole plan. That's but that's been a good way for us to market. And we, in fact, we've got uh, one gentleman that works with us that has had a stellar response. To that's his, all he does. He does nothing else. Isn't that amazing? We're getting ready to open him up to some new ideas. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But, I mean, just think about it, though. But, I mean, here also, this is a guy who's willing to move around and not just stick in one area right. to do business. You know, he goes to where the business is and then does business there. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Because so many, so many of us are just waiting for you know, the time to come back around for the clock to get back to noon mm. so that we can take advantage of it again, which is fine if you make a ton of money when, 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 it's, when it's right uh, and then know what to do once it slows down because that, that's some people's strategy, right? Like yeah. right now we know that some people aren't working now until January. And there's some other people <laughs> who are working the extra hours. That's right. <laughs> to, to get what, you know, to pick up the extras, the scraps, if you will, that those people are leaving on the table by not working. Right. right. But by having those systems in place, it allows you to really kind of pull back and enjoy the holidays if that's your thing without having to, you know, really put your because a lot of people stress this time of the year. Yeah. They're really stressing between, you know, their expectation of what the holidays are supposed to be and having enough money to pay for it all and keeping just life going all at the same time. Right. So for us, it's all about systems and processes. Right. Yeah, because I know when we do our direct mail campaigns, for instance, uh, we will, you know, per thousand, we're going to get about 200 telephone calls in a 10 day span. So and that's consistent. If you're doing 2000, 3000, 5000, you're going to get about a 20 percent call response. Right. You cannot answer <laughs> no. the phone <laughs> fast <laughs> enough if you're putting out, you know, three or four thousand mailers. Yeah. And, you know. That within a ten day span you're going to wind up with you know six hundred telephone calls. I, it would be pretty foolish to try and answer every one of those calls without without some automation in place. Totally. You know, um, I've talked about this before. I don't know about on the show or not, but you know, before you and I were working together, mm. I put this TV ad ad out on uh, Fox Five. You know, in the area, you know, I'm pretty pretty good at picking the the show times yeah and atlanta is notoriously expensive for radio oh did i say <laughs> that oh my gosh uh, but generally tv is cheaper you know to run a television ads you know in the past now right. things are changing has been uh, was way cheaper to run a tv ad than a radio spot well now yeah this was compete. 10 years ago yeah you know? well now i mean you have to i mean even now right now i mean generally they're pretty affordable yeah. relatively affordable but we're it's it's weird because now we're in that election cycle oh yeah and you're competing with the parties for tv space that and they're paying top dollar that's a whole nother you know thing a topic i, I don't even want to talk about because <laughs> how come how can you spend eight million dollars for a, a job that pays you a hundred thousand dollars a year i don't get that yeah, yeah. there must be something else going on there uh, some people might say. <laughs> yeah, some people right. might say that. There's more to politics than sitting in a chair somewhere, right, <laughs> creating policy. So anyway, uh, yes, there, there are. So I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's going to get on his soapbox. He doesn't do that normally. but uh. No, I try to stay, uh, you know, somewhat politically neutral since you and I have different viewpoints on the. They're not really that different. Okay, good. They're not really that different. They're not really that different. You know, but it's it's amazing. When we, uh, when we put these different things out there and watch the response that we get. Like, we're doing a campaign in Florida mm-hmm. right now, and we have a couple different telephone numbers, you know, for tracking. Yes. So we can see what, what's working, how many dollars we can allocate towards different aspects. I mean, listen, guys, we have a business, you know, that we're running. We don't have jobs. We have a business that we're running. And... When, a business? We got a business. That's right. And I tell people all the time, look, I didn't start this business to create a job for myself, yeah. you know, because people are always talking about scaling up. And some people want to do that, right? We know companies that are sending out 20,000, 30,000 mailers a month, you know, and they've got uh, skip trace services and they're cold calling the same people that they're sending these letters out to and they're having a pretty good closing ratio. Yeah. But, and they're doing a lot of deals, but, 
man, I don't want to be in the office, you know, answering, even though I wouldn't answer the calls, but I have to oversee the people that are answering the calls and oversee the, the mail campaigns and the banded signs and the this and the that. That's a job. So you remember that TV ad I was talking about? I do. And I we, do. you know, that was some time before I lost my train of thought. That's right. It's back then, now. Yeah, it's back. <laughs> um, Here comes the train. <laughs> no, no. So we ran this ad, you know, and uh, and I was not prepared, honestly. Oh yeah. For what happened, which was okay, we're going to answer the phone in my office. I had three people ready to go, you know. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you know that was a total mistake. Yeah. Because, because as soon as that ad came on, the phone just started ringing. Yeah, and uh, and th- now I know that I should have gotten a call service. Yes, because they could answer ten lines at once or more, and and go right down the or more absolutely, mm-hmm. go right down this call script, which is and they don't know anything but the call script, which is really a very good thing. That's right, because that keeps you know everything right on track. And I love how they answer the phone. This is what I learned later after I did all that. Yeah. Was they answer the phone with, hello, welcome to real estate, whatever. Uh, do you have a house for sale? They ask a question right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Do you have a house for sale? Let's find out, you know, right yeah. now. Because, you know, I'm paying for that by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Literally by the minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so if it's no, I want to sell you a roof. Which is nothing wrong with that. They don't. There's nothing for them to do. That's right. And, and it's easy to get off quick. Easy yeah. and quick to get off that call. And bottom line is, what we're doing is we're marketing for really not a hundred houses. We're looking for you know five. Right. And so all that call center is is a is a funneling system to separate out the ninety five from the five. That's right. And so they send us these reports you know, all lined up and then, you know, we can go through, print them off and in, in, in like 15 minutes or 10 minutes, go through all those and say, oh, there they are. There's the five. That's right. Because we're just looking for the ones that stick out. Right. Right. It's a good filtering system. Yeah. You know, and, and you have to, you have to have that big funnel to catch all the, all the stuff. Yeah. So that all the good stuff can shake out in the end, of course. Right, so systems. Having, it's right. Having those systems and processes in place are more beneficial than people really give you credit for. So many people are stuck on this, you know, uh, DIY, you know, process, and yeah. you're really just digging yourself into a hole, backing yourself into a corner, if you will, and other any other um, uh, <laughs> phrase you could think of. Just spend the money that you need to spend on your on your campaign fully. So that you can focus on what it is you do, and that's negotiating deals to sell, to buy and or sell. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more after the break. Which is coming up next. Let's do it. Do you need to sell your house? Well, our company will buy, will buy your house. We make the process very fast, very easy, and it's all cash. All you have to do is give us a call today. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español, llámanos, call us today. Oh, oh, oh me? Okay, yeah. We're back. Real Estate 360 show. <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, we, before this segment, we were talking about, you know, just pay the money yes. for the systems. Yes. But I wanted to add a little bit to that. So I've got this good friend of mine who is in the business, in the construction, renovation business, right. and some other things. And he has a belief that he has to sell his stuff, you know, really cheap. Mm. I, I don't know if it's a self-esteem thing or what, but if... And you said, you know, don't back yourself in the corner, but I'm saying, but, you know, back up a little bit, not necessarily in the corner, but look at the big picture of what's going on. Absolutely. And price things or have your system in place so that you, you have money coming in when you buy and sell a house or an apartment building or commercial building or whatever, 
there's enough there to cover your marketing. Mm -hmm. That's a simple thing, mm -hmm. isn't it? It is. For some, for a lot of people though, it's really a difference between the entrepreneur expense mentality mm -hmm. and the not entrepreneur investment into marketing mentality and the employee expense mentality is the difference because now they're thinking oh this is money going right out of my pocket they don't see the whole picture you understand absolutely well you know the great bill gates said if he had fifty dollars to spend he'd spend 49 of it on marketing yeah you know that's because his programs only cost him 50 cents and he's got 50 <laughs> cents left over you know i mean that's 50 cents is for the cd right 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 <laughs> But the more people know you're, the, the, the more that people know you're there and available to them, you know, it's that consistency, you know, especially in today's world, people get familiar with you really, really quickly. But if you don't create that, you're not going to do any business. If you just, just fly by night, you know, if you market a little here and then you stop for three months, six months, and then you start up again, yeah. you know, you, you haven't created, you haven't developed yourself. You haven't let people know that you're consistent enough to be out there and they don't know they're not going to remember you right there might be some people that have this this vague memory but even our direct mail campaigns i mean we've got two that we do one of them is a three month hit i mean just just constant hit another one is a five month process so do we mail to the same people over and over again absolutely why because you're developing a relationship with them oh right if you do not develop a relationship with people, create familiarity, you're just another company asking to sell them something. And then that goes right back into the follow-up game. Yeah. So I mentioned that for every 1,000 mailers that you send, you're going to get about 200 calls. doesn't mean you're going to get 200 deals. Some of those calls are going to be, take me off the list. That's you right, know, yeah. How did you get my address? Huh. You know, we've got one mailer that we utilize, one of our processes is a mailer that has a picture of their house on the on the front of the card, right? And people will call us, like I kid you not, and they're let's just say they're uh, a little peeved that they're <laughs> that they're the their 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 house is pictured on this card, and they'll call them. How did you get a picture of my house? You, want, you know, you don't want to. I mean, you don't want to offend anyone, but listen, it's not us taking the picture; it's Google. You know, I mean, because that's where it all comes from. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed this, but your house is outside. You know, <laughs> anyone could take a picture of it. Okay, it's not it's a, on the road. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's outside. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's you know, it's not like your your house is inside out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's there for the it's uh, there for the picture taking, uh, if you will. Do people so. think we? <laughs> Do we, people think we drive around, take pictures of houses, and go home some and do. download them and put them on a postcard? I think and, some people do. And fill them out and then put a stamp on it and write them a note. And oh, it's hilarious. Some of the up. calls you're going to get, they're just hilarious. <laughs> people are very irate. I'm not selling anyway. The point I'm trying to make is of those 200 yeah. calls that you get, you're probably going to wind up making about 20 to 30 actual um, home visits. Right. And... Uh, once you make those home visits, you go out and you're following up with those people. You're only going to get maybe two of those deals, two or three of those deals. Mm -hmm. But the other, you know, 17 to 27 people, you're going to follow up with them. You know, we, we lead into, we're information givers. We like to give people information and share. Mm -hmm. So you might be unrealistic about the price you're asking for this house, right? You may just want to keep your options open to see what other people are going to offer. But one thing that we do is let them know, hey, listen, that's fine, you, you know, if you don't want to deal with us. But, you know, here's our number. If you have any questions about any other offers, just give us a call. You know, you're going to get a lot of offers. They're all going to be about this. So your biggest concern is going to be who can close the fastest. You're also going to get offers that are higher than we're offering. But those people are just trying to tie it up, and they're going to come back and offer you a lot lower than we're offering. They're going to lowball you because that's a process. You know, if you're in a hurry to sell, right? I mean, think about this for a second, guys. If you're in a hurry to sell, you know you need to sell, and I'm offering you, let's say, 80000 for the house, which is realistic, and most other people that are like us are going to offer you around the same amount of, uh, around the same price. But then here comes some other company that says, you know what, I'll give you 110 
Mm-hmm. You know, and then, but there's all this stuff in the contract, all these due diligence periods, there's all this to get in to get out, and they've got, you know, 10 days or two weeks to do all this stuff. And at the end of that term, they come back and they say, oh, we can only give you 80. We can only give you 60 or 65. <laughs> right. You know, they're going to lowball you at that point, but that's their process. But if you really need to sell and you have committed to that, yeah, a lot of those folks just say, well, you know what, I got to sell. I should have took the 80, but now I don't have time. So I have to take the 65 or the 70. You know, I have to take less. And those companies that make those offers like that, that's what they bank on. Sure. You know, that's what they bank on. But you want to make sure that you're getting fair, treated fairly. So we make sure that we give them our telephone number. And if you have any questions about anything, even if you're not doing business with us, just give us a call. Just give me a call. We'll talk about it. I'll walk you through it. And we follow up with those people in a week or two if we don't hear from them. It's the follow-up game that really gets you the deals. And, you know, we're not really one a one-horse operation, a one-pony situation. In other yeah. words, there's more. we have more options with, with our creativity yes. for somebody who's selling their house. Maybe they don't want all the money right now mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Maybe they would like a stream of income, a monthly, a reliable monthly payment for their property. Mm-hmm. We can do that. You know, That's maybe right. there's some tax situations they need to, to work on, and they don't want all the cash right now. They'd rather maybe they spend it as soon as they get it in their pocket, and they mm-hmm. they know that, and maybe that's a control factor. For That's them. right. I mean, there's so many different situations. There's, you know, what it, for people that owe a little more yeah. on the house than it's actually worth. They can't really sell it in today's market. You know, but there's options for us to work with that deal. Yeah. Or people that need to get more out of the deal, but the house needs a bunch of work, and they don't have the money or, and or the credit to go get the loan to fix it up. Or the imagination. Or the imagination. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, and that and that's where we come in. We yeah. say, hey, let's let's work together. Let's put this deal together. Here's what we see for you. And often, I mean, because we've done this. I mean, we've, you know, I, it's like this. This sometimes it's like when we're when we're negotiating together and yeah. we're in a room with people. I feel like there's this tag team wrestling match that's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the people are just being hit from. You know, from everywhere with different options. They don't know what to pick. We're like, yeah, we could do that. And for us, it's it's like second nature to even have the conversation. We're like, okay, we can do it this way, this way, or this way. And then I'm like, and Steve will hit, pat me on the shoulder. We hit hands. And then I'm like, yeah, and here's how it'll go. <laughs> you know, and the people are sitting there. It's like you're they're getting hit in the cheek. No, left, no. right, left, right, left, right. They don't know what to do. So, you know, it turns into a situation like we had to do with um, that gentleman that had that property on Cascade. Oh, yeah. Where we had to tell him, this is this is actually what's best for you. Here's what's best for us, but this is what's best for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so let's find something in the middle and go from there. Yeah. You know, and that's what we did. By the way, he, he reached out again. Oh, good. Yeah. Because well, so. he's, that's a very challenging product, you know, project. Yeah, yeah. It's not something that most investors want to do. That's right. It's just too big. It's monstrous. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about a, what, did nearly a quarter million dollar reno- home renovation. That's amazing. You know? But, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, you've got to. And that's our cost. You, and you've got to jump through <laughs> his idea of what a really quality renovation <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, that, that was. Uh, I mean, you know, a toilet next to a fireplace in the living room is not really, you know, something yeah. that most people want. And that's not an exaggeration. Let me paint a picture for the listeners. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Is that all right? All right, back up. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's back up. I want, I want to paint a picture for them of what this looked like, okay? <laughs> so this gentleman did a renovation to this house, and it's one of those how, homes that were built in the uh, early 1900s. Uh, it's just a big, big old house. Yeah, almost uh, like a Tudor style brick. Yeah. Well, it's Hardy Plank. Hardy. Okay. It's Hardy Plank, except for the twelve by twelve slate mm. um, <laughs> tiles they put in the front of the house, which I know. is absolutely horrific. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, literally, you walk in the front door, you take a right, and you walk through this opening, and there's a fireplace right in front of you, and right next to the fireplace is a toilet. It, it, now, it's going to be right framed now. in, it wasn't it? Into like a bathroom? Yeah, it was framed in as a bathroom, but at some point they took the walls down yeah. uh, in there. But this was this gentleman's idea of an adequate renovation. <laughs> I mean, it was something I'd, I'd never seen before. But 
Let's take a break and talk a little bit more about some of our marketing techniques and tactics. Hi, this is Sammy with Sammy Hadid Real Estate, Keller Williams. Are you looking for a top producing agent who will look out for your best interests, top dollar on the sale of your home, a well-negotiated contract, an efficient closing? Please call me at 305-978-4249. I'm more than happy to set up a consultation. I'll put together a proposal for you to net top dollar for your home, what it is that I'm doing to get all my homes sold. Then you can decide what's best for you. Again, I'll do whatever it takes to get your home sold for top dollar, and I promise you that I will protect your equity with my life. 305-978-4249. Sammy Hadid, H-A-D-I-D. Hey, welcome back, Real Estate 360. Yes, indeed. So you were talking about before, what were you talking about? The, uh, the, the big... House renovation and yeah, just really, I was talking. Uh, the The premise of that story was all about options and being able to understand what your options are, which took us, you know, years to develop the ability to see these things absolutely uh, unfold in front of us. You know, it's not like okay, we read a book and then, you know, it was just there. I mean, it's not you know, it's not the Matrix. And to, and to make those <laughs> options real for us, you know, we've had to actually do them. Yeah. You know, and so, oh, well, and see the results and physically, you know, actually get in and 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 work it. Yeah. And then sometimes they work out great. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Uh, but um, we've learned what to do and, you know, usually what not to do. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and listen, nobody bats a thousand. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, <clears throat> If you're if you're going to these uh, big seminars and you're watching the shows of these of these folks and they're like yeah we've never lost on a deal we've ne-, you're being lied to yeah. right you're being lied to it doesn't matter what business you're in or what aspect of real estate you're doing there's a time when you've you've suffered a loss you've made the wrong decision you know you've held it too long you know you turned left when you took a should have turned right. You zigged when you should have zagged. Or you it were is what it is. Or you were alive in 08. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all you had to do. You know? <laughs> you know? like, so don't fall for the okie doke. You know, just understand that, you know, people have suffered some losses. And those losses are the best teachers of all. Yeah. You know, that's how you really learn how to how to play the balancing game with your investment and, and investments and then kind of go from there. But, you know, baseball players that hit 300, which is basically 30%, go to the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, in business, if you get it right one out of 10 times, you're done. You made it. No, I mean, it depends <laughs> on, you know, what other nine, what the other other nine things just look like. Just think about it. I mean, just think, <laughs> think about it for a second here, you know. I mean, historically. Yeah. You know, the inventor of the light bulb. Sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What what he said, Walt Disney. Oh yeah, <laughs> but he what was it three thousand times? Oh, I know three thousand plus times before he got it right the first time. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> I mean the, the one time, you know, I mean that's just what it is. I mean, think of all the investments that hedge funds or or private equity firms make into smaller companies. You know, oh, okay, I see your perspective here. now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking, okay, if you're in business and you know, and you you lose money nine times out of ten on whatever you're doing, you're you're not going to be around long. Well, yeah, and I don't necessarily mean lose money. Lose okay, money. Right. I just I mean understand. it didn't work out. Yeah, you know, it, but the one time it did work, yeah, it takes you to a totally different place financially. Absolutely. You know, so I'm now I'm with you now. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you got to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be, and and I don't mean just blindly throwing yourself on the tracks and, you know, hoping you don't get hit by the train, but unless it's the money train, exactly. But <laughs> you got to get on the tracks to get hit by the money train. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, which means, you know, it do, doesn't mean, you know, you're laying your life down you know, right. in front of a, a locomotive, you know, it means 60, take action. thousand ton locomotive yeah. or whatever they are. It means take action. Yeah. Put yourself in front of the people that can help you get to where you want to go. I just want to put that liability claim, you know, you disclaimer in there because, you know, some people would, you know, take me literally and go lay down on some don't, tracks. Don't get on the tracks. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Stay away. Yes. But, I mean, that's really what it all boils down to. When we're sitting here and we're looking at deals and we're, 
evaluating these potential opportunities, you know, you have to open the door uh, for the options. And so many people, investors in particular, are only looking at doing deals in one way. Exactly. And they leave all the other money on the table. All of it. And and hard money lenders are the same kind of thing. So yeah. uh, our private lenders, a lot of, not so much private lenders, but system lenders, mm-hmm. uh, hard money, national hard money, that kind of thing. They have their systems and they say, if it doesn't fit into this, then we don't do it. That's right. And, and, th- and that happens for any number of reasons. You know, they have become very familiar with this one process. They like it and they stick with it. Yeah, it works for them. And, yeah, and that's just the way they want to do business. Um, smaller companies have to be, they have to be a little more flexible in the things they do. In Absolutely. fact, you just met a new potential private lender yeah. that even is, is willing to lend money on master leases on the commercial side. That's right. You know, that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Now, I'm sure for him that's an equity play. Oh, totally. That's, <laughs> and he's, he says, look, and when I first talked to him, I said, listen, I'm an equity lender. Mm-hmm. First thing he said. Yep. And uh, I said, oh, tell me what that means. Because, you know, that means different things for everybody. That's right. And uh, so I was asking, well, you, you know, I, I called you on a refinance for this apartment building. What else do you do? And he just went down the whole list. He does mm-hmm. everything. He's yeah. been in it for 19 years, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, well, he's he's playing a game yeah. that uh, he, that he knows the options for. Yeah, you know, he knows when it's time to swing for the fences, and he knows when it's time to just get on base. I, <laughs> and I like this guy because he he goes from one he can go from one thing to another to another to another, and not miss a beat. Now I was at my networking meeting yesterday, and a banker shows up. Uh, commercial banker, small, medium, you know, not, not a big bank, not a small bank, but kind of medium size. And I said, so, um, what do you lend on? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking for his niche. I know they all have them. And so he says, well, what we really like, and there it is. That's all that, and what that means is this is what we lend money on. Mm-hmm. We don't lend money on anything else. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's <laughs> this right. is what we like. We like <laughs> owner operators of businesses who want to buy their real estate. Mm. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. And, and I turned and looked to the next person over there, and then, what do you do? You know, because I'm done with that yeah, that's guy. Right, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You already know where you're going no, with that's that. That's right. Man. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. I said, would you like to be a sponsor on a radio show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that's what it takes, though, right? Uh-huh. Just getting out there. I mean, you put yourself out there really on a weekly basis Yeah. to have these networking events uh, to meet new people that will potentially come into the fray in one way or another. Right. Right. And, but that, that's what it takes. I mean, people are always asking, you know, how do I get out there? How do I do this? How do I do that? Well, you know, you don't have to be a Warren Buffett, you know, a, a business juggernaut to have a weekly or even a monthly networking event to, to build your network, to put yourself out there, to let people know that, Hey, you know, I'm not necessarily an, an authority in this space, but I am as it relates to putting people together. I'm an authority there. Yes. And that there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity being the person that connects the dots. That's where all, <laughs> from my perspective, that's where most of the opportunity is. <laughs> that's right. You know, I mean, we can go down the list of people that have become, you know, famous and wealthy or just mostly just wealthy and some of them you never even hear about just because they're really good at staying behind the scenes and putting people together that they know are going to be able to work. There's a need here. There's a solution there. Let me put those two together and they, and it's a great place to be because it opens doors for you. Absolutely. You know, and for the collective and those are the things that you want to do. So for anyone that's listening that wants to be a part of a thing, right? Do one of two things, either both of which require you taking action, either Go to Steve's event on and a weekly basis. May I plug it real quick? Please do. It's a meetup group. It's called USA Business Connect. It's the Alpharetta chapter. By the way, that's the only chapter <laughs> that we have. <laughs> and you might have to actually search it under Alpharetta Connect or something like that. Uh, we're meeting once a week. As a matter of fact, I just started doing it weekly as of yesterday. It's going to be every Tuesday at 2.30 at the My Stir Fry Restaurant at 58 Canton Street, right downtown Alpharetta. 
and from two thirty to four, and it's gonna it's really casual, you yeah. know. We the whole idea between net about networking is people need to network. That's right. And I so I don't really structure a meetings per se. At two thirty, you you know, give time for people to show up. At three o'clock, we go around the table for a minute and a half. Everybody introduces themselves, talks about their business, or talks about what they really like to do as a hobby or anything. Tell a joke. We don't care. Mm. You know, it's up to them. You know, the idea is so that you're not going to say, wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. You know, so because I can't remember you if you do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you got to teach people how to introduce themselves. Right. right? There's, exactly. a, there's a way that people should introduce themselves and what they do. But yeah, that's one way. You know, come to Steve's event. Steve just told you where it is, when it is, and what you need to do to get there. Right. Yes. The other way is to start your own. Absolutely. Right. Steve is always looking for someone who wants to start the other chapter. I could use that. The east side chapter. I haven't figured out how to monetize it yet. (laughs) (laughs) No, but the reality of it is just take action. You don't have to know everything about anything to do something. Just do something. And you know, the thing about this meetup group, you know, people say, why do you do this? And I say, I don't know. (laughs) You know, but... But the resources I've gotten out of there, I mean, I met a guy a couple weeks ago. He's got private lenders. Hmm. I mean, the, I mean, he deals with high net worth athletes and entertainers. Right. So I'm going to be meeting with him probably tomorrow. That's Yeah, that's perfect. That's yeah. good. I so, bought stuff through a contact there in China. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's where we got our USBs from. That's right. And um, I met yesterday a lady who helps with book signings. Mm. And putting on book signing events. So, mm-hmm. guess what? I've got a book or two that I've written, and uh, we're going to have a book signing. That's right. It's just amazing what you can find at these things. You just know? by saying hello. Just showing up, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> Woody yeah. Allen said it best, you know. 80% of success is showing, showing up. up. Just show up. I mean, that's what it is. So, listen, guys, make sure that you go to the iTunes um, uh, podcast or the Spotify or Google Play, subscribe, listen, share, you know, get involved, engage with us. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Again, uh, go to YouTube, go to the website, which is realestate360show.com. And there you can find out more information about uh, the weekly event, uh, events that we do on a monthly basis that you can become uh, 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 involved in. You can get involved in at any moment. There's no waiting list, so just come on. Yeah. Just come on, work with us. My name is Jason Miles for Real Estate 360. Steve Connolly for Real Estate 360. And we'll see you next week.